So today is April 1st when I'm recording this video, and April 1st is usually the opening day for Major League Baseball. This year, because of the circumstances, there is no baseball. So I figure we could do a dynamics problem concerning baseball. I know it's not as good, but um, let's, let's go ahead and get started. So I'm gonna roll this clip here, and this person's gonna hit the ball a long way. Hit well in the center field. And this person goes up to the fence and makes the grab. Okay, so let's take a look. Let's rewind that. All right, as you can see here in the video, right, the 404 feet marker. So that's 404 feet from home plate. And this person's up pretty high. Uh, I would say maybe 10 feet where they make the grab here, where they actually catch the ball is 10 feet off the ground. So my question to you is how fast was that ball coming off the bat? Once the ball leaves the bat, the only outside force is the force of gravity that's acting on the ball. And that causes a constant acceleration. And we have specific equations that govern constant acceleration situations. And let me write those out. So we have V equals V naught plus the acceleration that is a constant times time. All right, so this is uh, one equation. So if we know the initial V naught, if we know the initial velocity, and we know the constant acceleration that it's acting upon during a certain amount of time, we can figure out the final velocity, okay? So that's one equation that you've probably seen before. Another equation maybe that you've seen before is this equation. And this equation commonly referred to for projectile motion where we have things like the constant acceleration, the time, and we have the initial velocity V naught, and then we have S and S naught. S naught is the initial position and S is the final position. So sometimes we bring S naught to the other side of the equation. We have S minus S naught, meaning the displacement there. Um, but here we have another equation. And our last equation, and probably the least known, it's probably not as covered as much in physics courses, uh, is this one. Let me make sure I got that right. Yeah, so if we want to figure out the velocity at a specific time, and we know the initial velocity, and we know the acceleration and the displacement, we know that its position at the current state and its original position, we can figure out its, its current velocity. So those are the three equations we have. All right, to solve this problem, we need to make several assumptions and break this down into x and y coordinates, all right? Some of the assumptions that we need to make are how high is the ball hit off the ground? So when the person swings, how high is the ball off the ground? And let's say it's roughly about three feet. And how high is it when the person catches the ball? I said roughly about 10 feet. So let's assume 10 feet, the ball is caught at 10 feet. Another thing we need to know is how long is the ball in the air? That's really the key ingredient. And lastly, we need to break this down into X and Y coordinates because gravity only acts upon an object towards the earth, right? So. In the y direction, we have this acceleration due to gravity, this constant acceleration, which is 9.8 meters per second squared or 32.2 feet per second squared in the English system. Hit well in the center field. Pilar back. He's going to run out of room, folks. As you can see from the video, we have a time of flight of the ball of 5.21 seconds. So let's go ahead and solve this by breaking it down into x direction and y direction. I'm going to start with the x direction here. And so we can write the equation. We need the equation that relates the distance and time and velocity. So we use this equation, s equals s naught plus v naught times t plus one half a sub c t squared. All right. So since this is the x direction, I'm gonna put x's on each one of these terms here, okay? 
And like I mentioned before, there's no acceleration in the x direction. It's only acting in the y direction. So this term goes to zero, right? This term. So then we just have x in the x direction equals s naught in the x direction plus the velocity, the original velocity in the x direction times time. So let's put some things in here. We said the fence was 404 feet away and we know that it's starting from a position of zero. So we can put in zero there plus v naught x and we know the time of flight is 5.21 seconds. So solving this equation here it comes out to be that v naught in the x direction, the original velocity in the x direction is 77.54 feet per, feet per second. Okay, and so that's just in the x direction. Now let's solve for the y direction. The y direction equation takes the same form it's just a little more complex because we have the acceleration term in there. So let's write that down. Okay. So in the y direction, we have the height that it starts out at, the height that the balls hit, we said was three feet, approximately 10 or three feet. And we said the height that the ball was caught was 10 feet. So we put in 10 and three for these two respectively. We know that the time is 5.21 seconds. And here, right, the acceleration due to gravity in the metric system is 9.8 meters per second squared. But here we're in the English system. So it is negative 32.2 feet per second squared. So don't forget the negative there because it's in the negative y direction. That acceleration is acting in the negative y direction. All right, so solving this equation, or subbing in all our values here, 5.21 seconds again. And 5.21 seconds over here, squared. Make sure you don't forget the squared term. So that is v naught y is equal to uh, 85 point, 85.22 or two, two, two feet per second. So we have the x velocity and the y velocity. So the original velocity is occurring at an angle. So in the x direction, which we solved, we have this vector of 77.54 in the x direction. And then in the y direction here, we have 85.22, all right? And then the resultant or the magnitude of the vector here, we'll call that v naught at an angle of theta, okay? So to find v naught, we can, we can take the sum of the squares. So we have 77.54 squared plus 85.22 squared and take the square root of that, we come out with v naught is equal to 115 feet per second. And theta, we can find theta because we know the tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent, which is 85.22 divided by 77.54. All right, and if we solve for theta here, theta comes out to be uh, 47.7 degrees. All right, so we have the initial velocity and the angle that it is acting above horizontal. So it's hit about at 45 degrees and uh, 47.7 to be exact. And the velocity here is 115 feet per second. And if we convert that to miles per hour, that comes out to 78.4 miles per hour. Now, 78.4 miles per hour seems slightly slow to be coming off the bat. And why is that? Well, we didn't take into account one important factor, all right? Nowhere in our equations there's the resistance due to air, the drag of the air. 
So actually by doing this approximation, we get a value that's much lower than the actual velocity coming off the bat. I would expect this velocity coming off the bat to be well over 100 miles an hour, uh, factoring in the air resistance. But for our calculation, it comes out to be 78.4 miles per hour.